we are now going to start our point four, which is factoring polynomials, okay? And this homework set for our point four is gonna be about 12 problems, okay? So I'm gonna go over the content, but at the same time, I'm also going to make sure that we, um, Try to get as many of the problems closely related to the examples that you would see in your homework set. So it says the process of finding polynomials who product, whose product equals a given polynomial is called factoring. A polynomial with variable terms that cannot be written as a product of two polynomials of lesser degree is a prime polynomial. A polynomial is not prime or is factored completely. And so in my first actual lecture video, right, you can hear the planes flying over my apartment. Um, I do live really close to Randolph Brooks Air Force Base, so I apologize now. Um, the camera does do a good job of muffling out a little bit, but I'm pretty sure you can still hear them flying over. So the, hopefully they don't disturb us too much um, as we continue through the lecture videos, okay? So... Let's see what we've got here. So if I can take an expression here, a polynomial, and if I can write it as two smaller polynomials multiplied together, that's the um, process of factoring. Even if all I have is a monomial, which means one term, times a polynomial with more terms, okay? So these could both be polynomials, binomial, binomial, trinomial, trinomial, binomial, trinomial, right? Didn't matter how many terms they got, but if you've got polynomial here, polynomial there, or a monomial times a polynomial. Now, the first example, it says classroom example one, factoring out the greatest common factor. What that's going to look like is this version. You're going to factor out a common monomial, one term, and then what's left over is a polynomial inside the parentheses, okay? So the first thing you need to do is identify what the two terms have in common, and that becomes the monomial that you factor out. So for A, I notice that 6 and 18 can both be divided by 6. Now, I also notice that both can be divided by 2, and both can be divided by 3. But they're asking you for the greatest common factor, which means out of 2, 3, and 6, I would have to go with the greatest common factor, okay? So yes, I know that both 6 and 18 can be divided by 2. Yes, both 6 and 18 can be divided by 3. And yes, both 6 and 18 can be divided by 6, but I have to use the greater, okay? Now, and I wrote this a little too low because I am going to need some more space down there. Also, what I noticed that they have in common is some a's. This one has a squared. This one has a to the fourth. That means this one has two a's multiplied together, and this one has four a's multiplied together. That's what an exponent means. It means repeated multiplication. So how many a's do each of them share? They each have at least two. I can't take out any more than two because they don't have any more than two in common. I couldn't take out three because this guy doesn't have three. So they don't have three in common. So the most I could take out that they have in common is two of them. Now, how do I figure out what goes inside the parentheses there? What you do is you take the first term and divide it by the monomial you chose to factor out, take the second term 
and divide it by the monomial you chose to factor out. Here's the monomial that I chose to factor out, and the results here will be the remaining polynomial. So six divided by six is one, a squared will cancel with a squared. And then here, I'm gonna bring down my minus sign, 18 divided by six is three, and a to the fourth and a squared, well two of the a's will cancel with two of those, leaving me with two left. So I have a squared left. This is the answer that they're looking for. The monomial or the greatest common factor that I factored out times a polynomial, which in this case is a binomial. And if I were to multiply these two things together, this monomial times this binomial, I should result in the polynomial or binomial that I was given to begin with. So that's one way you can check your answers when you're factoring, is once you have it factored, multiply the factors and see if you get what you were given originally. So here, if I were to do 6a squared times one, that would result in 6a squared. If I were to do 6a squared times negative um, 3a squared would be a negative 18, and a squared times a squared is a to the fourth. So it does check out there. Let's move on to the next um, part here. So what do all three of these numbers have in common? They can all be divided by seven. They all have an x, but this one has three of them, two of them, and two of them. So the most I can take out is two. They all have a y. This one has two, this term has three, and that term has two, so the most I can take out is two. And so then I'm gonna take each term, and some people can do this in your head, and most times, eventually, you'll want to do this step in your head. Um, but you need to divide each one of these terms by what you have identified as the GCF. So rewrite your GCF and then rewrite the leftovers. So 14 divided by 7 is 2. The y squareds cancel. I'll still have an x left. Uh, minus, that will be 4. x squareds will cancel. However, 2 will cancel, but I'll still be left with the y. Here I get plus 3 and both of the variables completely cancel out. So I'm just left with this expression. And again, you can check your answers. If you multiply these together, you will get 14, you'll get an x cubed and that y squared. If you multiply these two, you'll get negative 28 x squared and then y cubed. And if you multiply these, you would get 21, the x squared and the y squared. So this does check out. And that is the final answer there. Now, for this one, I'm gonna do this one next and then we'll jump to that one. For here, if you ever see a negative as your first term, your first term is negative, you don't have a choice. You are forced to factor out that negative. You have to factor out. Your, your my monomial on the front will be a negative, okay? Then you can look at those and decide, oh, they can both be divided by 3, and they both have a p. Although this one has 3, this one only has 1, right? So the most you could take out is 1. And this doesn't have any q's, so you can't take out any q's because they don't have q's in common. And so then how do I figure out what would go inside the parentheses? Take both of these terms and divide them by that monomial you've identified as the GCF. And because it this guy was negative, the monomial had to be negative, which means what I'm dividing by has to be a negative. So you get this negative 3p, negative and a negative is a positive, 3 divided by 3 is 1, p cubed, the one this will cancel one of those leaving me with 2. So you get 1p squared. A positive 12 divided by a negative 3 is actually a negative 4. 
and the P will cancel out the P, just leaving me with the Q squared. I can clean that up. I don't need to write a coefficient of 1. It can just be written as P squared minus 4Q squared. Now, check it, right? Does this times this give me negative 3P cubed? It does. Does negative 3P times a negative 4Q squared give me positive 12P squared? It does. So this is my final correct answer. For part C down here, they've already identified part of the common, um, the GCF. Notice that every single one of these terms, and this is a term, and this is a term. So every single one of those terms has this x minus 2 in it. However, this one has 3, this one has 2, and this one only has 1. So the most I could take from all of them is just 1. What about the coefficients in the front? It's positive, so my GCF will be positive in front. Um, but all of them can be divided by 2. So I can also take out a 2. And then I'm going to cheat here because I'm going to actually put this underneath all of these. So that I don't have to rewrite everything all over again. Now, 24 divided by 2 will be 12. If I have one of these down here, it'll cancel out one of those, leaving me with two left. And then 16 divided by two is eight. And this will cancel out one of those, but I'll still have one left. Here, this will cancel, and positive six divided by two is three. Now, this should be acceptable, but if the um, computer wants this times a polynomial, then you may have to expand what you have in those large parentheses some more. So I may need to write 12 times x minus 2 times x minus 2 minus 8 times x minus 2 plus 3. Now, remember what a square means. It means this times itself, which is why I've written it twice. Do not ever square the x and square the 2. You cannot do that if there's a plus or a minus in between them. If it were 2x squared, yes, I could square that and I could square that. But as soon as you put a plus sign or a minus sign in between, you cannot do that. Okay? So I will have to multiply all of that out. So I'm going to leave the 12 there. I get x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4. And everything else I'm going to leave alone. Then I'm going to distribute my 12. Now what was I doing here? I was what they call FOIL or distribute. You take this x and you multiply it times both of those guys. Then you take this negative 2 and you multiply it by both of those guys. And that's where I got all of these entries. Okay. Now that's 12x squared and that's negative 24x. That's negative 24x, and that's positive 48. Moving on here, that's going to give me negative 8x. Negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16, and my plus 3 that was hanging out. So if I combine my like terms inside the parentheses, I have 12x squared. Let's see. Negative 24 minus 24 minus 8. Oh, I typed in a decimal. Negative 24 minus 24 minus 8. I get negative 56x. And then if I have 48 plus 16 plus 3, I get a positive 67. And so this may be what they want. If they accept this, fantastic, right? But if they want it in that form of your GCF times another... Um, polynomial, then you do have to multiply it all out. So it's really going to bring in all of those basic skills that we should have on knowing how to square a binomial, knowing how to distribute, and knowing how to um, combine our like terms. Now this is not the end of R4. I do have quite a few more pages to cover um, and quite a few more um, factoring techniques to cover. 
But I'm going to stop this video here because it's already going to be about 15 minutes and you never want to um, try to soak in too much information in one sitting. So I'm going to, pop, to stop the video here and we'll wrap another one for the next page.